Idlib province has been battered by the Syrian conflict now in its 10th year. The last rebel-controlled enclave in the northwest is home to nearly 4 million people. Most depend on aid to survive and many live in makeshift shelters in camps for the displaced. Idlib reported its first coronavirus infection in July. Since then, the number of people infected has increased rapidly to 11,500 a day. After 10 years of dealing with bombing casualties and the targeting of health facilities, the coronavirus pandemic has really increased the burden on us. If cases of COVID-19 continue to increase, the health sector will completely collapse. Idlib has eight hospitals that can treat COVID-19 patients, but the UN says seven are already overwhelmed. And each one is desperately short of equipment. There are 142 ICU beds and 155 ventilators to cover the entire region. The beds in the intensive care unit are completely full. We have around 30 beds, all of which are occupied with patients. Upstairs, we have another department with 30 beds, and we have 30 patients in that department too. The outbreak has mostly affected Idlib cities so far, but the fear is the virus could spread to overcrowded camps where social distancing is difficult. The coronavirus pandemic has severely tested the world's best healthcare services. Syria's destroyed by years of war is facing its biggest challenge yet. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Emmanuel Massard is coordinator of operations for Northwest Syria at Doctors Without Borders. Joins me now via Skype from Brussels. Good to have you with us live on the programme, sir. Uh, Covid on the increase and the infrastructure isn't there or the facilities really can't keep up with demand. How worrying is the situation in Idlib? Today, today we can say that the situation is very worrying in Idlib. Um, in, in one of the centres that we have, we are at 90% of bed occupancy rates. That is very, very high. Uh, we know that as of today, the, the capacities of the health system to increase the number of beds that are available for the, for the patients, for the COVID patients, is, uh, is very, very reduced. So we are really worried about the, the, the COVID situation in, in Idlib today. You are one of uh, many humanitarian groups that's in the uh, location, working alongside various governments that is bringing aid in. What sort of help mm -hmm. is coming in right now as we approach winter? So there is, okay, there is obviously the, the, the context, the situation itself, where, where we have about 4 million people in, a, in, a, in, the, in, the, in the pocket of Idlib, and 2.5 million of them are refugees. So those people are obviously very, very vulnerable, living in refugee camps. You can easily imagine that in a refugee camp, keeping social distancing, uh, washing hands, and respecting all the, uh, all the things that need to be respected, to prevent uh, coronavirus is almost impossible. So obviously, we are organizing distributions of hygiene kits. We are uh, organizing uh, distribution of the eating materials and things like that to, uh, to, to face the winter uh, and, and also increasing our capacities in, in, the, in the different hospital that, uh, that we run uh, to be able to cope with, uh, with the increase of COVID cases uh, in yeah. Italy. Of course, uh, you are not a political group, you're an apolitical organisation, a charity, uh, but COVID itself uh, is obviously a, a hidden enemy that needs to be dealt with also from the central government in Damascus, uh, because obviously it, it, it doesn't sort of stop at uh, roadblocks or anything like that. So what sort of communication do you have with the government in Damascus about COVID-19 and about the help that people in Idlib need? Yeah, today, today we are obviously coordinating with the with the health authorities uh, that, that are uh, today in, in charge of the health facilities uh, in, uh, in in Italy. Uh, so it, it is it is paramount to be able to run our operations is to communicate with the uh, with the authorities that are in charge of the health structures um, in in Italy. Of course, you know, I did touch upon the fact that winter is getting close. You talked about the fact that social distancing, yeah. washing hands is a, is a real difficulty. Uh, again, mm -hmm. how, do you get a, how, do you, how do you get across this problem? Um, because it, um, some of, or most of Idlib is actually, you know, war-torn. There are derelict buildings, there are also mm -hmm. tented cities. How do you coordinate or get the message across about trying to social distance, trying to keep hands and locations clean without spreading the virus? 
But th th there are two different axes. It's first of all communication, so what we call health promotion. So we have people going around in the camps and in the city to pass messages, to, uh, to, to explain to the people how they have to react, how, to, how they can protect themselves. It is one part of it. And the second part is obviously a distribution of uh, equipment and material to be able to respect those, uh, those measures. Obviously, for the social distancing, in a, in a, tent in, in a, in a tented settlement, in a, in, a, in a big camp, it is almost impossible. So uh, you, have to, you have to give masks and, and things like that. So you, you, you have to find solution. Uh, but it is obviously not possible to implement all those measures that should be implemented to prevent coronavirus today. Of course, we mustn't forget the medical workers that work with you and the, the local uh, medical representatives. 17% of medical workers in Idlib have been infected with COVID-19, according to mm -hmm. uh, statistics. What sort of a strain does that put on the service that you can deliver and the service that those aid agencies that are in the area can deliver when they're under incre increased strain? That is obvious that the fact that uh, we have a high number of, of medical practitioners that have been infected by coronavirus is, is obviously a huge burden on the system. Um, the, the, the thing that we can do today is, is really securing, and that's what we do, securing our hospitals and our health facilities. Uh, so having a good triage in place, uh, putting the right measures inside the hospital, inside the health centers, to be able to prevent the spread of the coronavirus inside the, the centers, is, uh, is paramount to be able to continue running our operations. So really keeping our hospital and our health structures as a safe place where there is no coronavirus transmission to our Emmanuel. personal, but also between patients. Indeed, man. Emmanuel Massart from uh, Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, thanks for joining us from Brussels. Thank you.